Hey guys, we didn't get much of an opportunity in class to write a lot of code today, so I'm going to make this video to show you how to write some code. So in Visual Studio, I'm creating a new project, and of course a console application. I'll call it Pretty Colors, since we'll be playing around with changing the color inside the console window. All right. Well, we know that when we run our application, we're going to print some stuff to the screen. We're going to output some text, and we're not going to worry about any sort of input. But we do want the program to stop and wait for the user to press enter uh, at the very end so that we can see what we created. So I'm going to put a console.readline at the very end. And now we can test that our application kind of works. We can say console.writeLine, hello world. Okay. I'm going to hit F5 to run the program. And there we go, hello world. So now, what can we do to spice this up a little bit? Well, we can try playing around with changing the color of the text before we write it. Okay. Now these lines of code, they run in order. They start up here. And then it goes down to the next line. And if there's any code on that line, it runs it. And then it goes to this line, and it runs that code, and so on and so forth, until it gets to the end of the program. So if we want to change the color of Hello World, we have to write some code that changes the, you know, the foreground color of the text. And we actually have to write that code before we print the text out to the screen, not after. So we're going to say console dot and if we want to change the foreground color of the text, we can actually say console.foregroundColor equals console color dot, and we choose a color. Maybe, how about dark yellow? Now what this program is going to do when I run it is first it's going to change the text color to yellow, and then it's going to output some text. So that text that it outputs will be yellow. A dark yellow. There we go. Hello world. Now notice if we put another piece of text before this, okay, this text is printed out before we change the color of the text. So we print out text in the default color, we change the current text color, okay, and then we use that current text color to print out any lines that follow this line. So we actually see text that is like this gray, the default gray. And then we see, then we change the color to yellow, dark yellow, so then we have dark yellow text. We can also change uh, the background color of the text. We can say console.backgroundColor equals console color dot, well, what would be good? Let's try red. Hmm. No, nope, I don't like it so much. How about blue? Not really. What if I change the foreground color to, oh, there is no orange. How about yellow? Ooh, look at that. Pretty cool. Well, let's uh, go ahead and let's see if we can mix uh, our, our text colors. So I'm going to print out some text that says, um, basically, I'm going to make the, the program look like it is a, an AI that is running and taking over your computer. So I will type in console.writeLine, and I'll make it say, hello world, I am rogue AI, like that's its name. That looks pretty cool, you know, I guess. As cool as text can look. Okay, not really. We can make it look cooler. Let's make it so that the text Rogue AI, let's make it so that that is maybe red. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to, I'm going to copy this line of code with a control C and then paste it with a control V. And I'm going to make the program say, hello world, I am. And then I'm going to have it print out Rogue AI. 
So it'll say, hello world, I am, and then I'll change the color to red. Equals console color dot, oops, red. Cool. Now, I actually want rogue AI to be on the same line as I am. So hello world, I am rogue AI. So I don't like the fact that there's this carriage return right here, this line break. The reason why there's a line break is because when we output text using console.readline, there's always a carriage return after the text that we type. That's actually what the line part of readline means. It means there's a carriage return at the end. So if we got rid of line, there's actually another function we can call called console.write. Console.write will output this text to the console, but it will not insert a new line. It will not insert a carriage return at the end of that text. So when we get down here to rogue AI, it's going to pick up right where the cursor left off. So let's see what that looks like. F5. Hello world, I am rogue AI. It looks pretty cool, uh, but I need a space between am and rogue AI. So what I'm going to do is add a space at the end of this piece of text right there. Okay, and I kind of want the, the little period at the end of the sentence to be in the normal text color. So I'm going to get rid of it from this console.read line. And I'll come down here and do another console.write line. Oh, excuse me, write line. And uh, we'll make that a period. It outputs the text of just a period. And what I want to do is reset the console's colors. So I believe there's a function to do that. Yeah, there we go. Console.reset color. So we hit F5, and ah, look at that. Our period is actually bumped down a line. Seems like there's an extra carriage return in there. I think we can fix it by changing this right line to just a right. Same thing we did before. So with, again, with the right line, it's actually inserting a carriage return after this text. If we hit F5, there we go. That looks much better. Hello world, I am rogue AI. Now, if we want to draw a pretty picture, okay, we might want to, you know, not use text, but just have blocks of color on the screen. There's a trick that we can use to do that. We can change our console's background color to, let's say, I don't know, console, oops, console color dot green. And we can then do console dot right, or right line, whichever. And uh, I'll just say hello. Okay, so we've got this gray text on a green background. Uh, what we can do, though, is if we put spaces in here and then run it, the spaces just kind of look like an, an empty rectangle. So if I want to create like a pretty picture, if I output just spaces, and I output them in the right place, we get rectangles. We can form pixels using these. In fact, uh, the text in the console by default I think is kind of narrow. So if I put two spaces here, there we go. That looks roughly square-shaped. The other thing you have to consider is that if we're actually going to draw a picture using uh, these spaces, we have to be able to choose where on the screen we're drawing these spaces. Now, fortunately, we can do that. We can actually position the cursor where we want on the screen. And when I say cursor, it's the location that the program's going to use, the console's going to use to output whatever text it receives next. If you run the program, the cursor is left wherever that little blinking cursor is right there. You see that little blinking underline? That's where the cursor currently is. What we can do is we can move it somewhere else. We can call console dot set cursor position. Okay. What we do is we're going to type in two numbers here. We're going to type in uh, how many columns of characters we want to move to the right from the left-hand side of the screen. So let's say we go 40 characters in, and then we want to type in a number, and that's how many rows we want to go down from the top of the screen. So 
So let's say that would be 10. I need a semicolon at the end of that line of code. So this line of code sets the background color to green. This moves the cursor somewhere else, specifically at coordinate point 40, 10. And then this draws out two spaces, which will render as just an empty kind of green square. And there's my first pixel. Let's say I want to draw another pixel down into the right. Okay, so like kitty corner to this pixel, we're going to draw maybe like a pink one right here. Uh, okay, we can do that. I'm actually just going to copy these three lines of code and then paste them. I'm going to change the color from green to, oh, there's no pink. How about magenta? Close enough. All right. What I want to do is I want to go, I know I want to go down one row from this one, right? Because I want to go down and to the right. So I'm going to go down one row. And I have to go to the right. You would think one, but I'm actually drawing out two spaces here. So if I want the upper left-hand corner of this space to kind of line up with the upper or the lower right-hand corner of this space, I actually have to move this text over twice. So I'm going to pass in 42 for how many uh, spaces to the left of it from the left-hand side of the screen. So if we run it, there we go. We get this pixel and this pixel. Let's say we want like a whole row of pixels of the same color. Well, that's OK. We can just come in here and draw more spaces. Of course, uh, we can draw over top of, of pixels that we've already drawn. Uh, we can actually move this back up a row. Okay, so now this will be drawn, this magenta, uh, these magenta spaces that make this pixel will be drawn over top of these two spaces in this string. So if we run it, there we go. That's not a whole lot of code. Really, I'm just kind of introducing a couple new concepts. You know, one is the concept of changing the color. The other concept is changing where we're going to draw text to our output screen. So by combining these two uh, new concepts, we can draw pretty pictures. So inside of our learning module on Blackboard, I have an example project that I've written. So on Blackboard, inside of the learning module one, I have this project that I've written called Pixel Painter. And that project draws a smiley face to the screen. If you are trying to open that project, uh, I should show you how to do that. Okay. Okay, so how can you actually open this project that's up here in the Learning Module 1 on Blackboard? Well, first of all, click on pixelpainter.zip to download the zip file. You're going to go to your Downloads folder, find that zip, and unzip it. Inside of that new folder that you just unzipped, there is a solution folder called Pixel Painter. And then there is a solution file, pixelpainter.sln. Your operating system might be hiding that extension from you, just so you know. We can actually open that project by just double-clicking on the SLN file. In fact, that's probably the best way to open it. Now, I have that project open. And the code that's in that project is not open. So there's a code file in there. And if you have the Solution Explorer, we can actually open up that specific file. Okay, it's program.cs. If you don't have the Solution Explorer, we have to go find that inside of the interface here. Let's see. Window. Nope. View. Ah, view. Solution Explorer. We are going to uh, want to make sure that that is pinned. And we're going to say program.cs. Actually, I don't need that pinned. I'm going to unpin it. There we go. So here is my program.cs code. If we run this, this example code draws a smiley face to the screen. 
If you try to open up a project by navigating to and, and double clicking on the CS file, you will get Visual Studio to open the CS file. For me, this is a different version of Visual Studio that's set to open by default. Uh, but you will not be able to compile. You hit F5, it doesn't compile. And the reason why is because you can only compile a project that's open. I have a CS file open, right? I've got a code file open, but I do not have the project open that this file is a part of. Once we find the Solution Explorer, we can see that there is no solution open. And uh, remember, the, the solutions contain the projects, and then the projects contain the code files. So what we have to make sure that we're doing is that we're opening a project and or solution. So make sure we open up pixelpainter.sln. And that way, we will be able to see in the Solution Explorer, there's our code, program.cs and we can run it with F5. I hope that helps. Feel free to email me if you have any problems. Good luck with the assignment. Thanks.